So one day this young feller named Franz Joseph Gerstrasserner sat down in the sea and got bored. So bored he contributed towards fluid dynamics by creating a mathematical formula called the Gerstner wave which can recreate realistic waves. In this video, I not only present the acquisitions obtained from my coding adventure, but also try to explain its awesomeness to you without any ego-stroking academic jargon. Now, to reach the high IQ of Gerstner waves, first we need to understand the sine wave real quick. This stems from the sine function. This shit plots a point based off the input you give them here, the x thingy. So depending on your x position, you're going to get a different y position. Now if we plot the whole x axis as input, you'll see that the sine function essentially plots points that look like a wave. Now you're like, oh dude, but where did the sine wave come from? I don't remember, they taught me that in pre-calculus too, but it was too boring for my mind to really digest. Anyway, here's the same thing, but using the points of a 3D plane as input. So now let's limit the x input to be between 0 and 2 pi, which is a good moment to say that a typical wave has 2 pi of length, pi being 3.1415, I don't know what else. Now you're like, oh dude, but where did pi come from? And you know the answer to that. I don't remember, they taught me that in pre-calculus too, but it was too boring for my mind to really digest. Next, you can multiply a point by some value a, and a would then increment that point, right? So the higher the a, the higher the point. Well, the same jazz goes with the whole wave. If we put x to decrease by, I don't know, this value, you'll see that the wave moves a bit. Because now our input is x minus that little value we plugged. Well, let's name that little value something like c. So now c has the power to offset the wave. Great, c's get degrees. And if you have a variable that increases value across time like a clock, well, boom, you get your first wave, baby. Let's go, gg. Nah, I'm just playing. Up until this point, we've been plotting a point based off an x value, but the Gerstner wave actually uses both x and y. Before, x was x and y was sine of x, but what would happen if our x input also changed? Well, let's do this. Let's make x be cosine of x and y be sine of x. By the way, cosine is basically almost the same thing as sine, but with a different starting point. So what happens? It does a circle. This is a property of plotting points with a cosine and sine. Don't ask why, you already know my answer. I don't remember, they taught me that in pre too, but it was too boring for my mind to really digest. A sine wave simply goes up and down, which is unrealistic cause waves be wavy. So they do that little circle thing we saw back then. I'll show you how. If we add to the x parameter that contains our cosine of x, for it to also increase by x, then we get this bad boy. And if we plot this for a bunch of points, we see that there they are. Finally, by stacking waves on top of another, we'll get a more detailed look. And that's exactly how we arrive at this. Now, if we plot its color based on its height, sampling from a color gradient, we can add some stylization. To add even more, we could put ripples that stem from the Voronoi procedural noise, and finally, the Magnifique. Thank you all for watching my dudes, if you genuinely enjoyed this video, I'd be thankful if you press that like and sub thingy. I know that this coding adventure was inspired by the coding king himself, Sebastian. I'll leave his channel link below so you can watch some of his god level coding adventures. Also, I'm doing this challenge thing where if you run 5 miles and send me a screenshot via Twitter, I'll let you shout out whatever you like in the next video and place a quote about whatever you want to say as well. Here's the madman himself who exceeded the challenge and went 10 miles. Check his stuff out. Anyways, until next time, I'm signing out.